I'm excited to have the opportunity to speak with Srini Rao, founder of Unmistakable Media and the host of the Unmistakable Creative podcast today. At DIO, an experiential marketing agency, we strive to create experiences for our client partners that will make them unmistakable. So let's see what Srini has to say on this subject as we welcome him to our Thought Leadership series. So we first crossed paths with you at the Experiential Marketing Summit. Can you give me one key takeaway that you had from that event? Um, thing because I, I think I was sort of the, the oddball speaker of, of the event because I, I don't come from sort of like if you if you tried to fit me in with the rest of the group, I don't think I would fit in anywhere uh, because most of the people were sort of executives at, at big brands. Uh, I think for me, one of the big sort of takeaways was that, you know, you're um, like so many things can be brought into the business world that aren't necessarily from the business world and they can have significant impacts. Uh, and that just, you know, as I watched it I, unfold, I was kind of like, yeah, you know, I, I, I thought it was interesting because it was called the Experiential Marketing Summit, but like it lacked certain components of experience in my mind. Mm. Um, it was kind of very it, like in a lot of ways, it was the same thing um, that I'd seen in a lot of other events, which, you know, I spoke about in my presentation. But um, I, I think that that was one of the big ones for me was to kind of look at uh, how how, you know, I mean, how can you bring things that, mo you know, you don't necessarily think to bring to, you know, the event experience into it from other art forms? Right. No, that's very, um, a unique way of picturing events or thinking about events and adding that experience level. So I totally get that. Um, so you have your own events um, mm -hmm. called Instigator in Events. So do you want to take a minute to talk a little bit about those? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I can tell you briefly about it. I mean, we've only done it once. Uh, it's not something that we do annually. Uh, it's just one of those things that happened once it was kind of destined to maybe only happen once every couple of years. But, you know, it stemmed really from, you know, the question that you asked me earlier, which was my own frustration with going to events. Like every time I would go to one, I'm like, why are we here in these hotel rooms <laughs> under these fluorescent lights in these ballrooms eating this shitty food and having an experience <laughs> that is just not really engaging to the senses? Um, because I don't think human beings were meant to sit in rooms all day and listen to somebody give lectures in the front of a room. Uh, and even if they are, like, well, let's change the environment in which they do it. Let's make it more immersive. Let's make it the kind of thing that people don't sit around and dread, but like people are on the edge of the seats, you know, edge of their seats for the entire time. So how do you do that? Uh, you know, and for us, it meant, you know, blending aspects from movies, from theater, from music and, and bringing in all this stuff that, you know, doesn't seem like the most logical way to do things uh, in an event. So like, you know, for example, we opened with a movie trailer. It was something that I showed you uh, if you were in my talk at the experience marketing summit um and you know like you know taking every speaker and making mo actual movie posters for them you know turning them to exponential superheroes um it, just the kinds of things that you you kind of like okay why would anybody do that for an event and why is because it's so different and you know like people can't help but pay attention to it like the moment they walk into the environment it's inspiring it's uplifting it, it creates and so you know with that I think you you just end up again, you know, we're, we're talking about creating experiences. And so my goal more than anything was to create an experience that people couldn't help but talk about and create an experience that people would forever be changed by because it was so unlike anything they had ever, you know, gone through. Somebody had told me that uh, and said, you know, you're like, we have sort of two types of people in the world right now, like, you know, entrepreneurs and founders and instigators. And, and she said, you're an instigator. Um, and, you know, like I'm looking up this definition because I had to for, for certain things that I was working on. And, you know, in one context, it can be a really bad thing or somebody who's disruptive, who makes things difficult. Her d definition of it is it's somebody who starts or initiates something, right? And so at this point, you know, given where we're at with technology, given where we're at with uh, creativity and access to resources that we have. Uh, everybody has the ability to, to be an instigator. Everybody has the opportunity to start or to initiate something. And often they're waiting for somebody to give them permission to do that. And of course, if you're sitting around waiting for permission to do that, you may never get it. And even if you do, it's going to be within the restrictions and boundaries of the person that you got the permission from. So, you know, why wait for somebody to tell you that it's okay to do something when you could do it yourself? So I hear this theme from you, you know, you didn't quite fit in 
um, to the experiential marketing summit, the other people that were there and, you know, not waiting for permission. It's all about being unmistakable, right? So how can mm -hmm. we correlate that experiential marketing back to being unmistakable? Well, I mean, it, so let, let's let, let's define what, you know, unmistakable means or at least, you know, how I define it. And in my mind, the, the definition of unmistakable is creating something or doing something that is so distinctive, uh, so unique that nobody else could do it but you. Um, like nobody else would have thought of doing it but you. So how do we bring that into something like the Experiential Marketing Summit or, or just, you know, how do you bring that into the world of, of whatever it is? Part of it. It is trusting instinct and intuition more than trusting what the manual says or what author wrote says. You know, a uh, big time marketing manager or vice president of brand says that worked for them because, you know, like if you look at it, uh, and I've said this before, like every best practice would be pretty much much more honest if it was preceded by saying, this is what we did. This is what happened. This is how it turned out for us. It might turn out that way for you. It might not. It might be a lot worse. It might be a lot better. So you're, you're effectively, I think in so many ways, what happens is you limit outcomes when you try to use some sort of predetermined formula. Whereas when you go with intuition and instinct and, you know, like, I mean, hell, put a five-year-old in charge of what your event should be like and see how, more in, how much more interesting it would be. It would say, this is really boring. Why do people do this? Like, uh, whereas, it, you know, if you gave them permission to create the environment, they would create something that probably looks more like a kindergarten classroom and is more conducive to, to learning. So, I mean, it's, you know, it's not just about being silly for the sake of being silly or, or you know, uh, like, you know, sort of building fancy offices with ping pong tables and massage chairs and all this stuff. It, it's really about wanting to see something exist and doing it you know, in that way, because you want to see it exist. And also, you know, like literally saying, okay, who else would have thought of this but me? And bringing those things into everything that you do. No, that's very interesting. So how do you recommend brands kind of breaking down those rules of convention and stepping outside the box? Well, I mean, so if you're, if you're looking at a brand, depending on, on, you know, what the brand is or what the product is, I mean, I think really the, the first place I would say is to stop looking within your industry. That I think is the thing that leads to very vanilla, very cookie gutter uh, stuff that ends up getting washed in a sea of sameness, right? It's like, oh, I want to build a business in XYZ industry. So I'm going to look at what everybody else in that industry does. Like, yeah, there's some value to be gained from that, but you're definitely not going to create something unmistakable by doing that. Um, so looking outside of your industry, I mean, looking outside of your, your prime and, and say, you know, like, you know, like I said, you know, when it came to events, I didn't look at conferences. I looked at movies and I looked at theater and I looked at music because those were engaging experiences. Um, like ones that you go home and you're like on this high, you know, like, wow, that was incredible. I never found a keynote, you know, like a series of talks at a conference to feel the same way going to a Dave Matthews concert did. It's just not. What's to keep you from using music and lighting and, and all sorts of stuff to create, you know, this this really like intense experience. Um, the thing you're talking about pushing so far, to your own, and then you have to be okay with the possibility that things won't work and that things will fail because the thing is if all you're doing is depending on things that have been proven to work then that's okay we're just gonna we know it's been proven to work so we'll do it that way which means great but you're by definition anything unmistakable <laughs> definitely definitely um so what brands are doing it right what brands are being unmistakable what ones are you watching right now well, I mean, I, so I, I don't watch a lot of news. I don't watch a lot of brands. I mean, it, you know, this is, this is what's funny is, is that like part of it is I look at it through the lens of the people that I interview. So, you know, one is a, a graffiti artist named Eric Wall, who has completely transformed what a keynote speaking experience should be like. Um, then you look at my, my friend, AJ Leon, he runs a design agency called Misfit Inc. And, you know, they, every rule of any sort of creative project imaginable, they break, you know, like if they have an ebook, it's like a work of art. You know, there's, there's nothing like it. Um, Cards Against Humanity is a perfect example of a brand that is absolutely unmistakable because, you know, like look at the kinds of things that they've done for their marketing. Like you're not going to find those in the Harvard Business Review as this is how your marketing should be done. Um, you know, and, and so I think, you know, you really 
And it's not just about being provocative for the sake of being provocative, right? Like there's got to be a purpose behind it. Like you're not looking for just shock and awe. Um, in fact, I think big brands are actually pretty shitty at being unmistakable uh, because they're so mired in the way that they've done things for so long. Like, you know, it's, it's kind of like, oh, this is the way things were always have always been done and this is why we'll always do them that way. So it's hard to point to a big brand that you can say, okay, you're doing something so distinctive that like I'm blown away by it. And like I could take a, a look at it and say, you know what, there's nobody that could have done this. Are there any others that stand out in your mind as being some favorite change makers? Yeah. Uh, I mean, a big one really. And, and the guy who planted the whole sort of seed of unmistakable in my head is a visual artist in Germany named Mars Dorian. Um, he's just got such a unique sort of take on how he does the work that he does. So I, I would, you know, if you're looking for somebody to, to, if you're looking for, you know, probably one of the greatest examples of something that is truly unmistakable, it's him. Okay, great. So you do have a global audience. How do the disruption tactics change from culture to culture and what unmistakable content is being made across the globe? Do the disruption tactics that a brand takes have to vary from culture to culture or across the globe or are all people and what they're doing as unmistakable still relevant regardless? Um, that's a really interesting question. I mean, I, I think, it, you know, like the concept is that it's incredibly distinctive. Like nobody could do it but you. So everybody wants tactics because the tactics basically supposedly inoculate you against failure, which is the problem in the first. Um, so that you know, and that that's what makes this so challenging is that there's no map really. Like what you get is a compass to do this, which means you know, like trying things that haven't you know ever worked before or, or haven't been done before. Okay. Because the goal isn't to create something that's already been done or to replicate unmistakable because in replicating something already unmistakable would actually not be unmistakable. I do want to um, give you the opportunity, though, to talk about your new book. I know that your first book, The Art of Being Unmistakable, is a Wall Street and Amazon bestseller. So congratulations on that. Um, but you have a new book coming out, so I was hoping that you could give us some of the details. You know, the, the new book is called Unmistakable Why Only is Better Than Best. And, you know, we really like really deep dive into the whole idea of what does it mean to be unmistakable, um, you know, and not just sort of defined it, but really gone through tons of examples uh, of people who've done this. And then, you know, really, hopefully, because that roadmap for this, um, and, you know, I opened the book specifically by saying that there is no roadmap uh, <laughs> that we've dissected all these interviews and all these stories into into ideally you know I think in a lot of ways what is a framework for people to, to kind of see the power of creating things that are unmistakable because I mean if you're unmistakable your competition eventually becomes irrelevant right definitely definitely so if you had one piece of lasting advice for somebody who's trying to figure out what it means to them to be unmistakable, what would you say to them? I would say to make something every day. It doesn't matter what it is. Maybe it's writing, maybe it's taking a photograph because there's means the way you see the given give you a viewpoint, like to express that viewpoint through the things that you make. Okay, awesome. Well, you've given us some great insights today. Well, thank you so much. Do you have a great right, night? Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Bye.